with you. <laughs> Welcome to worship with Trinity Reformed Church. We are a community God gathers, transforms, and sends to share Christ's expansive love with the world. We have a few announcements in our life together that we want to highlight this morning before we start worship. Next Sunday, we have a couple special things happening. During worship, we're going to celebrate our annual Blessing of the Bikes liturgy, so you're invited to bring your bicycle to worship on Sunday or a helmet if that's logistically easier for you, but the bikes are fun, so I'd encourage you to do that, and we'll share a liturgy of blessing over our bikes together, and then after worship, you can, if you want, ride your bike over to Richmond Park, or you can take a car for our monthly potluck. This month, it's going to be a picnic, so you can bring a dish to share, your own table service, and drinks, and we'll enjoy some food and fellowship together. So that's next Sunday, but if you're looking for a way to enjoy yourself today on this Sunday, you are invited to join an intergenerational game of Ultimate Frisbee this afternoon at Sweet Street Park. If you have questions about that, you can talk to Ben about it, and he would be happy to encourage you to join that game, because the more the merrier. Now, we invite you to turn in your red hymnals to number 230, and we are going to sing together, Come Holy Spirit. I don't need a note, actually, because I'm going to change the key. Uh, <laughs> this song is a call and response song, so I will sing a line, and you are going to echo it back to me as our intro song this morning. Number 230, I'm going to find it in my own hymnal, and we'll sing together. Let us worship God together. Come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, Maranatha, Maranatha, come, Lord, come, come, Lord, come, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, Maranatha, Maranatha, come, Lord, come, come, Lord, invite you now to rise and body your spirit as God calls us to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, grant us your peace. Come, Holy Spirit, grant us your power. Come, Holy Spirit, grace us with your presence in this time of worship and all. Let us continue to worship our God together, singing number 228 in our red hymnals, Send Us Your Spirit.
Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was and is and will come again, and all God's people said, amen. I invite you to be seated. God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from shame, saved from regret, saved from the judgment of others and ourselves. So that we might experience God's salvation, let us now confess our sins together. God of new creation, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you brought forth the earth and its creatures in abundance. We confess that we have failed to trust your bountiful goodness. We hoard the earth's resources and refuse to share your gifts. We dishonor your generosity by withholding our charity from most in need. We betray your kindness by dealing harshly with our enemies. We disregard your compassion by severely judging the sins of others. Forgive us, O oh God. By the power of your spirit, set us free, we pray. Renew our hearts and minds that we may enjoy the fullness of your blessing upon all creation. Amen. Having confessed our sin, hear this good news. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Friends, believe this good news and live in its peace. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share Christ's peace together. Got all the children. All right. <laughs> and they're my own. Right. Let's sing our prayer together. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here everywhere. So I had all these questions I was going to ask, but I think you guys know the answer. Jonah, what day is today? Pentecost! And how can you tell in the sanctuary it is Pentecost? It's all red. That's exactly right. We even dressed up our dog. So I'm going to read a book about Pentecost, okay? Here we go. Can you see it? You good? Okay. With a day when God made church. We all gather and wait. Jesus is gone, and we are nervous. Everyone is curious to meet the one that Jesus would send us. 
The room is dark. Men, women, old people, young people, and animals wait. Wait for something to happen. Suddenly, the animals move with excitement. What's that noise? It grows louder. It feels like wind, and it pounds like drumbeats. It fills the room loud and full. Then the room grows brighter. Something hot and blazing shines on us. Darkness is gone. Fire fills the cold space. Now we feel warm inside our bodies. Smiles paint our faces. We all know something new is happening. We feel our hearts change inside. Is this what Jesus promised? A new sound comes. Words. Words like raindrops fall across the room. Some with loud sounds. Some with quiet whispers. Words like drumbeats, words that tiptoe through the air. People crowd around. They hear the words. They recognize the languages. Something new is happening. The Holy Spirit has arrived. Everyone around me begins to ask questions. Who is this Holy Spirit? What is happening? Why do we feel so different? Why do we hear so many languages? Peter stands. He walks around looking at each of us. I wonder, is he going to speak? Then Peter opens his mouth. He starts to preach. His powerful voice fills the spaces around us and between us. Friends, something new is happening. Jesus has given us a wonderful gift. Don't be surprised if you all start to preach and dream too. Young and old, men and women, we are all called to something new. God is changing us so we can see old things in a new way. We all listen as Peter tells the story of God's love in Jesus. He reminds us all what Jesus taught us. We hear again how Jesus loves us. We remember when Jesus healed our friends, told us stories, and shared good news. We listen as Peter describes the day, that horrible day, when Jesus hung on the cross, and we remembered how sad we were. Dark clouds covered the sky and the earth shook, and Jesus died to save us. But our sadness did not last forever. Peter reminded us that soon there was joy, laughter, and dancing. Jesus came back to us. God raised him from the dead and gave us new life. We all hear the word Peter preaches, and the Holy Spirit changes us. The rivers of baptism pour out, and we feel God's love, a love for our families, our friends, and even people who are far away. People, people everywhere all hear this good news. We all begin this new life together. We become a new family. We share our things. We break this is what we call the day of Pentecost, the day when the church was born. Men and women, boys and girls, people from spirit, as we worship Jesus, alive and risen. Alleluia. I wonder what it felt like when the Holy Spirit came. Says in the book they felt warm inside. And I wonder what it feels like when we feel the Holy Spirit 
with us. How we recognize the feeling. Well, Dad's going to read the story from the Bible again. And keep wondering about Pentecost. Holy Spirit, be with us as we hear your story and as we go through and making us one family, your church. All right. Invite you, congregation, to turn in your together our song of preparation, Spirit of the Living God. Our first reading today comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. It's on page 114 in our Sanctuary Bibles. Listen for the word of God. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And our second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. It's page 885 in our sanctuary Bibles. Listen again for the word of God. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Red is our liturgical color for Pentecost, reminding us of blood, passion, and fire. At Trinity, we don't have a liturgical flower for Pentecost, although some churches use red peonies or geraniums to mark today. It might confuse the color scheme slightly, but if Trinity did have a liturgical flower for Pentecost, I think we should use the dandelion. Now, hear me out. This is deeper than if you have one dandelion in your yard, you have 50, and Pentecost is 50 days after Passover. By this point in our dry spring, most dandelions are no longer yellow. They've turned white revealing not just one flower, but a many-flowered head. On a dandelion, over 120 ray florets are packed together as tightly as disciples in a locked house, waiting for the wind to blow and disperse their seeds over the whole world. Are you convinced? Would it help if we used the red seed of dandelion? There's, and they come in the fall, yeah, red seed of dandelions. Dandelions, okay, may be a confusing choice as a liturgical flower for Pentecost, but there is some confusion built into this day. In our reading from Acts, people are so perplexed by the events of Pentecost, they dismiss the disciples as drunkards. The more generous people there are still left asking, what does this mean? 2,000 years later, we gather and wonder together still. We summarize the meaning of Pentecost as the sending of the Holy Spirit, but that leads to more questions. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, Scripture shows us the Holy Spirit is the active presence of the invisible God on earth. Okay, but why did the Holy Spirit need to be sent? Wasn't the Holy Spirit already here? 
yes, in the very opening lines of Scripture, we already see the Holy Spirit hovering over the earth when it is still a formless void. Then we see the Holy Spirit throughout the pages of the Hebrew Scriptures, giving Bezalel artistic skill in crafting the tabernacle, providing Moses, Joshua, and the elders wisdom for leadership, granting Samson great strength, anointing David as king, promising the prophets a Messiah would come who would be filled with the Spirit. And in the New Testament, we see Jesus fulfilling these prophecies. Jesus is conceived by the Spirit, baptized by the Spirit, driven out into the wilderness by the Spirit, given power to exercise demons through the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is revealed periodically in localized ways throughout Scripture before Pentecost. But Pentecost celebrates the expansion of the Holy Spirit's presence. That leads us to the question, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit's presence now? Discerning the purpose of even our own small lives is no easy task. We take pity on this year's graduates who feel overwhelmed by the question of, what do I do with my life now? The stakes only seem higher for Christians who ask, what is God's purpose for me? In an altar in the world, Barbara Brown Taylor says, I once thought there was one particular thing I was supposed to do with my life. I thought God had a purpose for me, and my main job was to discover what it was. But I did not have a single clue what I would do when I graduated. Taylor knew people who seemed to have great certainty about their purpose, but she agonized over hers. She prayed for weeks and weeks until her prayers changed from words to something more like wolf howls. And then one night, Taylor says she heard from God. She was asking again, what am I supposed to do with my life? And she heard God say, anything that pleases you. What? She said, finding words for her prayers again. What kind of an answer is that? She heard again, do anything that pleases you and belong to me. Taylor says at one level, that answer was no help at all. The ball was back in my court again. I could be a priest or a circus worker. And side note, Taylor has always wanted to be a circus worker. She's captivated by the magic of the circus. Well, sometime later, after seminary, Taylor realized it was not what I did, but how I did it that mattered. Work, whether paid or unpaid, solitary or communal, work connects us to other people. Every human effort offers us the chance to make things better or worse. One problem for people who believe God has one particular job in mind for them is that it is almost never the job they are presently doing. Those who are busiest trying to figure out God's purpose for their lives are often the least purposeful about the work they are already doing. Everyone's life requires a certain amount of flexibility. Seasons and situations impact how our purpose gets embodied. If a dandelion thinks its highest purpose is to produce a beautiful yellowish-orange flower head, it will be quite lost in the next stage of its life when its petals dry out and turn white. But that doesn't mean it no longer has a purpose. Taylor realized in every season of life, her purpose is to love God and neighbor to choose kindness over meanness, to recognize the divine in human form and engage someone else whose fears, wants, loves, and needs are at least as important as her own. The promise of Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit's purpose is no longer constrained to a few people at certain times. The Holy Spirit rushes among Jesus' followers gathered in Jerusalem and blows the good news out to Jewish people gathered from all corners of the empire. New Jesus' followers are filled with the Spirit and sent out to serve as witnesses of God's presence everywhere. 
Somehow Jesus' death and resurrection makes the Holy Spirit's long-awaited expansion a reality. In Christ, uh, a new human identity is formed through which God's presence is experienced everywhere all at once. In the Gospel of John, the Holy Spirit is sent on Easter. The evening Jesus is raised from the dead, he breathes on the disciples, and they receive the Spirit in a locked house. The author of Luke and Acts reveals a 50-day timeline while highlighting a number of symbols along the way to help us understand what this sending of the Spirit means. In Luke and Acts, Jesus appears to the disciples for 40 days before ascending. Any event 40-something long reminds Scripture readers of the 40 years Israel wandered in the wilderness when God was transforming them into a new people. At the beginning of Acts, we read that the number of disciples gathered in the house was about 120, which is a symbolic nod to the 12 tribes of Israel. The reader recognizes that Jesus' disciples are a renewed Israel. Then, 50 days after Passover, it's time for the festival of Pentecost, also called Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks. Shavuot originally celebrated the end of the grain harvest, flax and barley, the first crops of the year, kind of like a a spring Thanksgiving. In time, Shavuot also came to celebrate Moses receiving the law on Mount Sinai. All these symbols together help us recognize at Pentecost, the God of Sinai is acting again. The promise of an abundant flow of God's Spirit is being fulfilled. God's Word is present, and these people with flames on their heads are claimed as God's own people. The revelation of Pentecost is that the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to make us all one in Christ. But to our confusion, our new unity in Christ does not sound like uniformity. Most people gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost already share the common language of Greek or Aramaic. The miracle of Pentecost is not that everyone now speaks the same language. The miracle is that God's word takes form in every individual's hometown heart language. God speaks to us in the vernacular of ordinary people. Everyone is able to hear the good news that we can be fully human in Christ. Barbara Brown Taylor says, Jesus could be both fully human and fully divine. The last thing to occur to most of us is that to be fully one is to be fully the other. When people wanted Jesus to tell them what God's realm was like, Jesus told them stories about their own lives. When people wanted Jesus to tell them God's truth about something, Jesus asked them what they thought. With all kinds of opportunities to tell people what to think, Jesus told them what to do instead. Wash feet. Give your stuff away. Share your food. Favor reprobates. Pray for those who are out to get you. Be the first to say, I'm sorry. For those who take Jesus as their model, being fully human becomes a full-time job. It becomes a vocation in itself, no matter what we happen to do for a living. Taylor concludes, One of the reasons I remain a Christian in progress is the peculiar Christian insistence that God is revealed in humankind. This is the revelatory work of the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't always believe it, but every single one of us has God-given purpose and reveals God in some way. When we live in Christ, our humanity flowers in unexpected ways, and we live our purpose by embodying God's love, a love that overcomes all divisions. In our lives, we've tasted the joy of revealing God, the satisfaction of embodying love for someone else. We've been there for someone in an hour of crisis. We've shared a decades-long friendship. We've helped someone learn to garden. 
But there are also times when we feel like a dried up dandelion. Some days we can't be convinced that our lives have any purpose. We can't see how they're good for anything. Even then, we are still claimed as God's people. Even then, we are good for more than we know. The much reviled dandelion is always good for something. Every part of a dandelion is edible at some point in its life. The humble dandelion contains more vitamins, minerals, and fiber than most plants in our gardens. It can be used to make dye or tea or medicine. Its seeds and nectar feed the birds and the bees. And that white seed head waiting to be taken by the wind remains a source of magic to children of all ages. The dandelion always has a purpose because its body is always giving to others, embodying some part of God's love. When Barbara Brown Taylor feels like she's lost her purpose, she says the best cure for her is to wash someone else's feet. If feet aren't available, then washing almost anything will do, be it baseboards or dogs. Cleaning, she says, brings us back to our senses, back to our bodies, back to the home of God's Holy Spirit. God's great purpose for the Holy Spirit means our bodies are always able to share God's presence with others. Even when we don't know it, even when we need help, the Holy Spirit is God's active presence among each of us. The same Spirit that blew through Jerusalem announcing that we belong to Christ is still blowing throughout the earth today, working to make us all one. So as we gather as one body here on this Pentecost Sunday, may we strive to be as useful as dandelions, blowing wherever the Spirit leads us. May we trust the presence of God, the God who is with us and working to be known through us. And may we live our purpose in all the seasons of our lives, growing to be fully human in Christ. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the story of your presence blowing throughout this earth, falling upon us afresh, making us one and overcoming all the divisions we create. Help us to participate in your work in ways we can know and understand and in ways that are beyond us. Bring us to that place where all humans can recognize the humanity we share with everyone else. And make us one with your creation too, so that all heaven and earth are one in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song of response is number 238 in our red hymnals. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
invite you to be seated. Our great prayer of thanksgiving can be found in number 811 in our red books. Know that all who seek to follow Jesus are welcome at this meal. If you wish to remain in your seat, raise a hand and a server will bring the elements to you. Let's begin our great prayer of thanksgiving. reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Most righteous God, we remember in the supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. night he gave himself for us, took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread. And he gave it to them, saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all. For the forgiveness of sins. 
as often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life. Let all who hunger come and eat. This is the cup of salvation. Let, Let all who thirst come and drink. These are the gifts of God. For, for the, the people, people of God. God. Let us come for all things are now ready. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our hearts echo the words of the psalmist. We have opened our hands to you, and our hands have been filled with good things. For the many gifts you have poured out on us, especially the gift of your spirit poured out on your church, we give you thanks. Receive now all the gifts we bring to you. May our gifts and our lives embody our gratitude for your care. In gratitude for all you have given, God, we offer you now these prayers on behalf of the world you so love. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, and fill your children with your love. Open our eyes, O oh God, to see your presence all around us in the stillness of this sacred space in the busyness and noise of our city streets, in the joys and celebrations of our lives, in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Bring wholeness to the sick. We pray especially this morning for Rachel and for Jim as they celebrate victories, as they endure treatments, in all these things, may they know your presence with them on their journey to health. Strengthen all those who are weak, we pray. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, and inspire our warring world to seek peace. 
We remember today those who grieve lives lost in service to others and those willing to give their own life on behalf of others. May those life left behind know the presence of your spirit with them and may we honor these lives lost by striving for true peace for all people. Empower us, O oh God, to put away our weapons, to love our enemies, and to pursue justice for all people until the world is transformed and renewed. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, and revive your church. Set us free from complacency and apathy. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in love and service. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Open our eyes to glimpse your kingdom emerging all around us and draw us into the new things that you are doing in this world. We pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is still teaching us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit for our song of sending. It's number 232 in our red hymnals, Come Holy Ghost.
I invite you to lift your hands as a sign of the unity the Spirit gives us. As we go from this place to become fully human, we go with God's blessing. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.